Look like a basketball. Uh, some mud, a little better. So the fundamental is about 50. I can tell, or 55, because we have a hump here at 110, and that's too high for a kick. So here it is, around 50. Hear that bass? Hey guys, here's a tutorial on fundamental EQing. Uh, this is a basic protocol for EQ for any instrument, and I'm gonna do it on kicks, snares, cymbals, and toms. We can load in a few other instruments as well, but I wanna show you the three to four attention points. The low end, fundamental frequency, the mid, or two parts, the tone, that's where the mud is, and that's where the room is as well. And then the top end, the transients, and the sparkle, air, they call it sometimes as well. So here is a kick. So this is a kind of a rock kick. We're gonna throw on a, an EQ on all these channels. Okay, and then I also wanna throw on the Pro Q3. And I would advise you guys to get the Pro Q3 if you want to do some very surgical EQing. If mixing is very important to you, get the Pro Q3. But before we hit, dive into the Pro Q3, here's the kick. All right, so there's always gonna be a fundamental, low fundamental. With most EQing, you can probably get rid of some of the lows, but on a kick drum, you want a lot of those lows, but we don't really need anything around 20 or so. There's different schools of thought. Some people take everything out at 30 as far as their kick, and then their sub goes beyond 30. Some tracks, the, the kick drum is sharply cut at 50, and the sub carries on. For now, let's just do 20 as a safe bet. Most sound systems don't go that low and you can't hear 20 either, most people. Okay, so we're gonna narrow in on the low end fundamental and the low end fundamental on a kick drum ranges 50, 35, 36. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna do is check the waveform. We're just gonna lower it a little bit because I want some serious headroom. When I crank the EQ, I don't want it to, to start distorting. So that has to do with gain staging. All right, so you can really hear that around 36. All right, there's another hump around 60, which is double the fundamental. So, so this kick is probably in D, roughly. And then the next D, which is doubling the EQ, which is about 72. So from 35, 38 or so, 36, double that, 72. We have another kind of fundamental, hear that? So this is a pretty sloppy kick. Big, this is the Tommy Lee kick drum. So let's keep it there. I like to point out all the fundamentals. So now there is a kind of a, a chest thump around 100 that we could accentuate a little bit. So we'll kind of keep that there. So that's kind of the thump. So this is the low, this is the fundamental frequency here. And then there's always a, with most kick drums, at least acoustic kick drums, there's another thump around this 90 to 100 area. You can see that, the waveform. And that sounds okay. Let's take another EQ. There's, there's always going to be the mud zone, which is around 300, sometimes 250, on up to about 500. Hear that? Like around 150, that's okay. Sounds decent. I don't mind that. There, we start to get the mud. And anything higher than that, we start to hear the room. So if it was recorded in a room, we're gonna hear that room. The thing about this area here as well, the mud zone, it's also the tone zone. So it can be a snare drum, a kick drum, it can have really nice tone around that area. So you gotta be careful what you cut. Almost all drums and many other instruments are gonna be cut around this mud zone, around 250, 300, about 500. And a lot of the fundamentals of the keyboards are gonna be around that zone. So it's also nice to make way for those. Hear that? You can really scoop it low. There we go, that sounds better. Let's just turn that off and turn that on. Mud zone. Next one, 1K. 
1K is that room sound. It's nice on snare drums. Little crack of the kick drum, that could work. Some kicks, no. Little slap. There's a little bit of slap of that room. All right, we're starting to get into the top end. Maybe around six to 10K, we're at three. This is gonna be the air. Listen to the air here. This is the high shelf. That's where the transient really starts coming out. So this area here, this top end, this click, the beater, the slap of the, of the bass drum hitting the head, that's what you hear. Even down the 4K sounds good. And it's acting in parallel with this low end. Boost a little bit of this as well, a little bit more, because they act together. They work together, because that's the fundamental frequency as well. So that's the basic rundown of a kick. Here's a different kick that sounds quite extreme. All right, this is already very punchy. This one's quite different. That one's got a lot of that right here, that a lot of that 200. Ooh. But still, you can see the fundamental frequency is hovering really low, about 46. And see right away, you can hear that distortion. Immediately when we go up just 2 dB, we hit distortion. So if you do want to start adding some bumps in your EQ, let's go ahead and lower the dB. So give yourself some more headroom. Now, look at that, we go up to 3 dB, 6 dB, there's no distortion. Now we finally start hitting distortion around 10 dB. So you can really change your EQ curve, which will dramatically change the way your instrument sounds if you bring down the gain. Even if you get a sample from a sample pack that's totally rinsed, which is, you know, at zero, very high gain, you just bring it down and then you can continue to alter it. There's that room sound and potential mud. Right here, we have a pretty big spike here, naturally. That's a good spot for that upper transient. And then not a whole lot going on in the air area. So you could really crank it. There's nothing wrong with, with boosting like up to 20 dB if it needs it, or 10 dB, or lowering really, really large dB amounts. That still sounds okay. 14 dB up. That means, if it, so if it sounds good at 14 dB up, that means that the instrument was highly lacking in that area. Or if this is a jazz kick, we'll do something like that. But if this is EDM, we're gonna be up here. Now granted, this is only for this kick. If you try to put this EQ on this kick, forget it. This bass drum here, is gonna have a lot more natural top end. You can add a little bit. Hear that air? Got a lot of room sound. Listen to that room sound. Like a basketball. That's some mud, a little better. So the fundamental is about 50, I can tell, or 55, because we have a hump here at 110, and that's too high for a kick. So here it is, around 50. Hear that bass? So we can start pushing that, and that's too high. So see, we got a bunch of distortion. So let's go here and lower it by 6 dB. Sorry to cut you off. That was part one. There is a part two. I hope you learned something from this video. I EQ so many kicks every single day. I record kicks all the time. Let me know in the comments if you found this useful. In my latest sample pack, you will find all these kick drums. And when you get the sample pack, you will get a chance to pre-order my master class where I dive really, really deep into all this stuff. Kicks, snares, hi-hats, creating hi-hats, creating kick drums, adding them and arranging them into your songs. If you like this video, please give it a like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel.